It's now 4 a.m. in Colombo, and I'm now at the airport, preparing to fly to Mali. Every passenger is required to go through a security check before checking in. The queue was quite long, and I queued for around 15 minutes. By the way, a Chinese version is also available for this video, so check it out if you are interested. There were only a total of three priority check encounters. Among them, two were for One Road Ruby members. It took a long time for me to get to the check-in desk, so if you are flying out of Colombo, I would highly recommend reserving more time for the security check and for the check-in. This was the Serendip Lounge. I hope I pronounced it right. But anyway, it wasn't the lounge we visited as only passengers flying in business class were entitled to this lounge. So instead, let's go to the Serendiva Lounge. The decor of the lounge looked a bit outdated and it was basically just a room filled with chairs. In the buffet area, there were some sandwiches, fruits, ham, and some hot dishes for breakfast. However, since I wasn't hungry, I left the lounge after taking some videos and photos. Okay, so let's now walk to our gate. My flight UL101 would be departing from gate 12. It was a 5 to 10 minute walk from the lounge. The boarding procedure of the Colombo Airport is similar to that of Singapore Changi Terminal 1. Security check was conducted at the gate before boarding. However, what's different was that the boarding area here in Colombo was far smaller than that in Changi. By the time boarding was about to start, the boarding area was completely filled with people. It was a challenge to get to the boarding gate. Business class and one world members were invited to board ahead of economy class passengers. Finally, we were on board this Airbus 330-300. The aircraft is in a two-cabin configuration, and unlike other airlines, there wasn't a premium economy cabin. The economy cabin is in a typical 242 layout. I was seated in 30k. The seats were coated in blue with some flowery patterns. They looked quite good to me and each of the seats was equipped with a touchscreen television. The size of the TV was similar to that of my hand. As I remember, there wasn't a remote control and all the buttons were located right below the TV screen. I wouldn't say the TV system was extremely responsive, but it was still okay. A special feature of Sri Lankan's Airbus 330 was that cameras were installed at the nose gear and at the tail of the aircraft, and those videos were played on our TV screens. Right before takeoff, a member of the cabin crew came and welcomed me on board. This wasn't something I expected.
Let us see how the seat was. As with other airlines, there was a cold hook located right next to the TV screen. Under the screen, there was a USB port for charging. The foldable table was quite firm and sturdy. As I've mentioned in my previous Sri Lankan Airlines review, I didn't like the pillow. Inside the seat pocket, there were some magazines and the safety instruction card. Wi-Fi was available on this flight, however, since the flight wasn't long, I didn't use the service. An electric socket was under the seat and the headphone jack was on the armrest. Soon after takeoff, a flight attendant came with her meal cart and gave out snack boxes. There were two types of snack boxes, a vegetarian option and a non-vegetarian option. Both choices contained a sandwich and a pack of orange juice. Neither of these items taste too good. But anyway, I didn't expect much for a one-hour flight. The toilet on this aircraft was cleaner than that on the Airbus 320 I flew on a few days before. Before landing, I asked for a cup of Ceylon tea. It was served with sugar and milk. I wouldn't say this was a bad flight, but it could have been better. The check-in service could have been improved by increasing the number of priority check-in counters. What I observed was that the time of waiting for economy class counters and for the priority counters were almost the same. The lounge was a bit outdated as well. I do think it is time for Sri Lankan to refresh the lounges. For boarding, it was a total mess. But I don't think we can put the whole blame on the airline as it was restricted by the airport design. In-flight service was professional like last time, and I loved the Sri Lankan hospitality. The food, and maybe we can just forget this part as since it was only a one-hour flight, expectations were not high. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also check out the videos by One Word Flyer. See you soon!